Hey guys, Buck Creek here, and I'm going to do a video on how to make bullet shell necklaces. I used to do this probably two or three years ago. I haven't done any, but I thought it'd be something nice to show y'all in case anyone was interested in it. I don't know who else was besides me, but um, things you're going to need some small fishing weights, 22 uh, little shells. And if you want to get intricate with your design, you can get a few more pistol shells, I would say. Then you're going to need your main shell, which I'm going to use is this little 243 I picked up. Some 20 pound test, preferably braided, not mono. Mono rips a little bit easier. A hammer. And a piece of wood that has an uh, area drilled out of it. Or something like this, just a rubber uh, dumbbell. And you're going to need a little bit bigger nail like this. Alright, I'll show you how to get through the process. Oh, one more thing. You're also going to want fish clips like these if you have them. Those will come in handy. Well, I'll take you all through the process and I hope you all see what I can do. So the reason I started doing this is I just had all these shells laying around and I was bored so I just said well, well I guess I'll make something with for something. I'm not a big arts and crafts guy at all. Uh, this is just something I was interested in doing so I did it. Uh, but the first step you're going to do, uh, get your 22 shells and just go ahead. You don't need that many but just get probably 14 off. And what you're going to do, you're going to take it and put it on your little block whatever or in my case this weight. Put it right there. And all of these already have a puncture in them. But I'm just showing you how to do it. Put your nail in. Take your hammer. And just pop a hole through it. Like so. And do that about 14 times. That's all you have to do. And then you'll have your first step complete. Now, step two, you can either skip it if you're just going to use 22 shells. Or you can do it if you're going to make it a little bit more intricate and have a few more shells. Take your pistol shells. I like to use pistol shots because you don't need a long, long, skinny uh, nail, which is actually a lot harder. It takes a lot longer. But what you're going to need is a tiny diameter nail. And you're going to have to find the primer in here. You're going to have to find that hole. Put it down here. I have to kind of hold that. Yeah. Pop that primer out. Primer's popped out. It's sitting right here. Now I can't get to it. And you just go through that process. I'll probably fast forward through this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it all on camera. Alright, so step, I think it's four or three. Yeah, it's three. Get your rope. Rated line, I use 20 pound test. Uh, just simply put it around your neck. Usually this will fit most people. Alright, there should be good. Hold it. Get your cutting utensil. Give it a little extra line. I'm getting mine about five, six inches extra. You're not wasting too much material. Just cut it. I got some uh, fishing line to braid with. The braided line is easier than the mono's because the mono uh, flexes a lot more and it can cut a little bit easier. Although I prefer fishing with mono because uh, of the flex, actually. I'm not a huge fan of braided. I think it's a little trickier to get lures on on and off quickly for me and it's more expensive so call me cheap whatever I prefer mono uh, let me show you the fourth step going right up alright so step four take one of your ends of fishing line get your little um, fish clip and it's one of those things where it's easy to change the uh, lures out on it quickly. Things like that. 
and just tie a simple knot. Try to use as little line as possible. to do a little extra knot. I don't do a traditional fishing knot, frankly, because I don't know how, but whatever knot I do, it seems to work and not let go, so tighten it up. Cut any extra string off. Don't cut it down to where it's so short that you don't have any play in it, but I mean what I'm talking about. Don't cut it down to where it's just long and kind of annoying either, so. I'll leave probably about a centimeter on there. And then that will eventually just loop in a little bit more. There we go. There you have it. Step five, go ahead and get you about 12 little 22s that you punched holes through. And feed them through, back first. Get a little hole and just slide it on down like so. You can see it swinging there and just peat that 12 times and you ought to be golden. Step six. Get your string again. And this is for the more intricate ones. If you are not doing one of these intricate ones, then skip six, step six. And back end first. Put the front end, it's just going to go over the 22 bolts. Back end first. Pull through the where the primer was just at. Slide down. I've only got four of these, so I'm going to put two on this side. Sorry about the camera work, it's probably not great. And that's the beginning of your necklace. Step seven is the hardest step. Take your largest bullet, and you don't have to take the primer out of these, there's just really no point to it. And you're gonna have to get about six inch to five or four inch piece of fishing line around it. You're just gonna do a simple not, but you need to get it in the neck of the bullet. If if, it, if you're using like a Mosin Nagant bullet, which is like a 7.6254R, uh, you can do it, but it's much trickier and it's more likely to come undone. Once you get around the neck, go ahead and retie it. Then, take your necklace, put it on here, take these two strands, just tie it up as close as you can to that bullet. Do one simple knot, slide it down if you have to, close as you can looks better. Do a second knot. Then do a third knot. And for me, a fourth knot. Make sure it's nice and tight. By taking these two ends. Yeah. And take any excess string, like so. Make sure you don't cut your other string. I may have 
gone a little bit longer than I wanted to, but oh well. Simply snip it off. Close to the bottom, but not too close. Do those extra knots so if one does let go, you have more line to catch the third and fourth. done a better job. That's not terrible. Eighth step, make sure you got plenty of line on the sign, which I do. Got more than enough. Go ahead, take your two big bullets. And this is the tricky part, because you got to get through the primer from the uh, case down. This end right here, the neck. Yeah, some will feed it through. I turn around, get some light in there. Next thing, get your string and you're going to put these 22s on, except you're going to be doing it the same as uh, your other bullets. You're going to have to do it long ways like this. And I'll show you why. If you don't, then it'll just go through this third E8 special bullet. If you put the spur of the 8 special bullet backwards, then it just doesn't look good. You got 22s going on to it. That's the reason why. And that's why this is also the other trickier part. So I'll fast forward through this. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, that probably takes longer than anything. But um, once you get that done, you got most of the necklace done. Next thing you're going to want to do, uh, this one may be a little short. I can kind of tell that just by looking at it. I'm going to have to get another fish clip here. Simply slide it down. Tie a knot off. Okay, so here's the finished product. Now we're going to try it on real quick. And this is probably one of the more, no, on the good side of what I've done. And there you have it. Uh, there's one more step to this if you continue feel like watching to make sure this doesn't jingle around as much, and I'll show you all that real quick. But uh, this is pretty much overall done. But let me show you that last step, and hope you all like it up. Alright, so last thing, if you have any, like, uh, fishing weights such as this. Go ahead and get done quite a few in your hand. Somewhere like that. Start putting them in here. I would not suggest a filling to, to the top because then that will make the next step a little bit harder. Okay, that's very nearly filled to the top, so we'll just put these aside. Next thing you want to do, I'll just go ahead and stop this, put this step in. Take it, take the little 22 shelf. You have a 243. This only works with 243. Pop it in there. Oh, I think I got one too many weights. Take another one out just in case. Yeah. Take that 22 shelf. And then hammer it in a little bit. And then that's it. You capped it off. You're done. It's heavier on the bottom now. It's going to stay uh, much more down. But if you don't do that, you can use it as a whistle. But that's your finished product, guys. Uh, hope you all like this. 
Please like, subscribe for more. You're not going to see any more arts or crafts video from me. This is just something I was going to do. Because next uh, weekend, hopefully, we're bringing back another hunting vlog. Yes. Uh, deer season is over, but hog season is a year-round thing. And we're going to try to go up there, do that a little bit. And squirrel season is still going on, I think, next week. I'm 99% sure. But uh, we'll get back up there. We'll do that. I hope you all enjoy this. And hopefully, you all enjoyed this, if you all watched. Uh, this is just something I decided to do because I wasn't going to have anything and I like to post at least one video every week. Anyway guys, please like, subscribe for more. This is Butt Creek.